The Sun and Space Weather, Part 1 of 2 Space Weather Space weather refers to the variable conditions on the Sun and in the space environment that can influence performance and reliability of space-based and ground-based technological systems, as well as endanger life or health. The term, space weather, was coined not long ago to describe the dynamic conditions in the Earth's outer space environment, in the same way that, weather, and, climate, refer to conditions in Earth's lower atmosphere. Just like weather on Earth, space weather has its seasons, with solar activity rising and falling over an approximate 11-year cycle called solar cycle. It is primarily driven by solar storm phenomena that include coronal mass ejections, solar flares, solar wind, and solar energetic particle events. These phenomena can occur in various regions on the Sun's surface, but only Earth-directed solar storms are potential drivers of space weather events on Earth. Solar Cycle Around every 11 years, the Sun's magnetic field flips, the North Pole and South Pole switch places. This causes the Sun to have seasons of low and high activity, also known as solar minimum and solar maximum. The Sun goes through periodic variations or cycles of high and low activity that repeat approximately every 11 years. Although cycles as short as 9 years and as long as 14 years have been observed, the solar or sunspot cycle is a useful way to mark the changes in the sun. Solar minimum refers to a period of several Earth years when the number of sunspots is lowest, solar maximum occurs in the years when sunspots are most numerous. During solar maximum, activity on the sun and the effects of space weather on our terrestrial environment are high. At solar minimum, the sun may go many days with no sunspots visible. At maximum, there may be several hundred sunspots on any day. Sunspots Sunspots are dark, cooler areas on the solar surface that contain strong, constantly shifting magnetic fields. A moderate-sized sunspot is many times larger than the size of the Earth. Sunspots form over periods lasting from days to weeks, and can persist for weeks and even months before erupting or dissipating. Sunspots occur when strong magnetic fields emerge through the solar surface and allow the area to cool slightly, from a background value of 6,000 degrees Celsius down to about 4,200 degrees Celsius. This cooler area appears as a dark spot on the sun. As the sun rotates, sunspots on its surface appear to move from left to right. It takes the sun 27 days to make one complete rotation. The sun activity causes space weather. Looking at the sky with the naked eye, the sun seems static, placid, and constant. But our sun gives us more than just a steady stream of warmth and light. The sun regularly bathes Earth and the rest of our solar system in energy in the forms of light and electrically charged particles and magnetic fields. The resulting impacts are what we call space weather. The Sun is a huge thermonuclear reactor, fusing hydrogen atoms into helium and producing million-degree temperatures and intense magnetic fields. The outer layer of the Sun near its surface is like a pot of boiling water, with bubbles of hot, electrified gas, electrons and protons in a fourth state of matter known as plasma, circulating up from the interior and bursting out into space. The steady stream of particles blowing away from the Sun is known as the solar wind. Blustering at 800,000 to 5 million miles per hour, the solar wind carries a million tons of matter into space every second and reaches well beyond the solar system's planets. Its speed, density, and the magnetic fields associated with that plasma affect Earth's protective magnetic shield in space, the magnetosphere. Does all solar activity impact Earth? Solar activity associated with space weather can be divided into four main components, solar flares, coronal mass ejections, high-speed solar wind, and solar energetic particles.
Solar flares impact Earth only when they occur on the side of the Sun facing Earth. Because flares are made of photons, they travel out directly from the flare site, so if we can see the flare, we can be impacted by it. Coronal mass ejections, also called CMEs, are large clouds of plasma and magnetic field that erupt from the Sun. These clouds can erupt in any direction, and then continue on in that direction, plowing right through the solar wind. Only when the cloud is aimed at Earth will the CME hit Earth and therefore cause impacts. High-speed solar wind streams come from areas on the Sun known as coronal holes. These holes can form anywhere on the Sun and usually, only when they are closer to the solar equator, do the winds they produce impact Earth. Solar energetic particles SEPs, are high-energy charged particles, thought to primarily be released by coronal mass ejections CME. Where the cloud of a CME plows through the solar wind, the solar energetic particles are traveling much faster and because they are charged, must follow the magnetic field lines that pervade the space between the Sun and the Earth. Therefore, only the charged particles that follow magnetic field lines that intersect the Earth will have an impact on Earth. Solar Flare A solar flare is an intense burst of radiation coming from the release of magnetic energy associated with sunspots. Flares are our solar system's largest explosive events. They are seen as bright areas on the sun and they can last for minutes to hours. We typically see a solar flare by the photons, or light, it releases, at most every wavelength of the spectrum. The primary ways we monitor flares are in X-rays and optical light. Flares are also sites where particles, electrons, protons, and heavier particles, are accelerated. Reconnection of the magnetic fields on the surface of the Sun drive the biggest explosions in our solar system. These solar flares release immense amounts of energy and result in electromagnetic emissions spanning the spectrum from gamma rays to radio waves. Traveling at the speed of light, these emissions make the 93 million mile trip to Earth in just 8 minutes. A team of scientists investigated a connection between solar flares and Earth's atmosphere. They discovered pulses in the electrified layer of the atmosphere, called the ionosphere, mirrored X-ray oscillations during a July 24, 2016 flare. Coronal Mass Ejections CMEs. The outer solar atmosphere, the corona, is structured by strong magnetic fields. Where these fields are closed, often above sunspot groups, the confined solar atmosphere can suddenly and violently release bubbles of gas and magnetic fields called coronal mass ejections. A large CME can contain a billion tons of matter that can be accelerated to several million miles per hour in a spectacular explosion. Solar material streams out through the interplanetary medium, impacting any planet or spacecraft in its path. CMEs are sometimes associated with flares but can occur independently. In contrast to solar flares, CMEs are not particularly bright, may take hours to fully erupt from the sun, and typically take one to four days to travel to Earth. Although the main CME might take several days to reach Earth, shockwaves can accelerate some of its particles to close to the speed of light, at this speed they can cover the 150 million miles to Earth in as little as 90 minutes. A CME contains particle radiation, mostly protons and electrons, and powerful magnetic fields. Solar Wind The solar wind is very weak compared to the wind on Earth, though it is much, much faster. When we measure solar wind speeds, we typically get speeds of 1 to 2 million miles per hour. They end up being weaker because there is very little of it. The solar wind density is usually about 100 particles per cubic inch. 
Thus, a typical pressure from the solar wind is measured in something called nanopascals whereas at the Earth's surface, the atmospheric pressure is 100 kilopascals, and surface winds are about 100 pascals. Since solar wind is measured in nanopascals, 10 to the power minus 9 pascals, it is approximately 1,000 million times weaker than winds here on Earth. The solar wind is a stream of plasma, electrons, protons, and alpha particles, helium nuclei, released from the upper atmosphere of the Sun. Coronal holes. Coronal holes are variable solar features that can last for weeks to months. They are large, dark areas, representing regions of lower coronal density, when the sun is viewed in EUV or X-ray wavelengths, sometimes as large as a quarter of the sun's surface. These holes are rooted in large cells of unipolar magnetic fields on the sun's surface, their field lines extend far out into the solar system. These open field lines allow a continuous outflow of high-speed solar wind. Coronal holes tend to be most numerous in the years following solar maximum. Solar Energetic Particles SEPs. An intense solar eruptive event has many parts. This animation starts with a solar flare, which sends light and energy in straight paths, traveling at the speed of light. A coronal mass ejection, or CME, appears next, this is a giant cloud of solar particles that also expands in a straight direction with speeds up to 2,000 miles an hour. The eruption also generates solar energetic particles, with speeds nearly reaching the speed of light, following the spiral shape of the solar wind's magnetic fields into interplanetary space. A close-up of a solar eruptive event, including a solar flare, a coronal mass ejection, or CME, and a solar energetic particle event. Several of the processes leading to the CME and solar particle event are not yet understood. Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere help protect our planet from the effects of solar energetic particles and cosmic rays. Solar particle events release large numbers of high-energy charged particles, predominantly protons and electrons, which are accelerated to large fractions of the speed of light. These particles may arrive at Earth between 30 minutes and several hours.